Hey, welcome back to Dungeon Music Theater. You know, I recently had a few friends over at my house and they saw my living room sound system and saw my turntable and said, hey, uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, does it sound any better than, you know, my iPhone? So before I knew it, I cracked open this reissue of uh, Purple Rain and uh, did a bit of a shootout between a Apple Music lossless version versus the turntable. So after listening and A-B testing both uh, with some, not the most scientific volume matching, one friend thought that the vinyl sounded uh, more exciting, while the other really just couldn't tell the difference. One also thought that it was just a cool conversation piece sitting in the living room. So this really got me to think about maybe doing a, a real serious critical listening uh, session between say Apple Lossless versus vinyl. I tried my best to volume match them, which I think is the most critical uh, part of this. And secondly, just making sure that the versions of the song from the album and the Apple Lossless was the same. Uh, for example, a lot of the old vinyl records are remastered, which usually means, you know, jacking up the volume and, and kind of like squishing all the uh, dynamic range out of it. So that was one of the most important things. So right off the bat, the vinyl version versus the Apple lossless version, they're just gonna sound different, especially if you have a relatively hi-fi, higher resolving type of system where you can listen to the differences. I mean, just consider the gain staging, right? Vinyl has to go through uh, this phono preamp into an analog preamp stage, and then it gets outputted to the speakers, where with the uh, with Apple lossless, it just comes out as a digital audio signal directly into some kind of a digital to analog conversion and then out to the speakers. So even if they were exactly the same at one point, whatever the source was to record it, just by that virtue, they are going to sound different. Okay, so right away, I could tell that the high frequency range the vinyl version sounded quite different from the Apple lossless version. And I want to again avoid the language about which is worse or which is better, because uh, I think it's more about preference. And I also want to be really careful about languages like it was brighter than others, because if you say bright, uh, that may be somebody else's saying that it's harsh. Or things like it sounded really warm, when in fact, somebody else, the warmness could be interpreted as being muddy or unclear. The vinyl version was more resonant. It felt more transparent, if I could choose a word. The Apple Music version, high frequency information was a lot more dense, a lot more forward feeling. It's as if the high frequency information on the vinyl, uh, if you can use this kind of analogy of a marker outlining the high frequency. I would say that the vinyl version was a little more delicate. It was still defined, but it was more delicate, while the digital version was more of a bolder outline of the high frequency range, uh, if that makes sense. I know this is a difficult way to describe like sound, but in that sense, I do believe that I preferred the vinyl version over the Apple digital version. When it comes to dynamics, I'm really talking about the punchiness of the mid-range and the bass. So on When the Doves Cry, the percussion on the vinyl just had more detail, more dynamic range. The digital version was like 1 through 10, and the resolutions were like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 on the digital version. I would say that the vinyl version had like decimal point resolution. So it was more like 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, and, and so on. So in that sense, the vinyl felt to me that it had more uh, detail in the dynamic range than the Apple lossless version. So again here, 
I think I prefer the vinyl version over the Apple version. Another interesting note about the dynamics on the vinyl version, every track I played on there, I felt the urge to turn it up, uh, while on the digital version, uh, not so much. Uh, I don't know what this means exactly, other than to say maybe vinyl, uh, it just felt like it had more headroom uh, before it became unpleasant. When it comes to imaging, I'm specifically talking about how spacious the overall sound feels in the mix. Here again, in the vinyl version, I felt more space, more room to breathe, where the instruments uh, and the mix was more separated. The digital version, I have to admit, it definitely felt more crowded, a little more claustrophobic, uh, where the sounds tend to kind of mesh a bit together a bit too much. So here again, I preferred the vinyl version over the digital version. Remember when Apple came out with that iPod where there was an ad saying that it would hold a thousand songs in the palm of your hand? Well, now with the phone, uh, it can basically have any song ever made ever on that streaming device. Not only that, unlike the iPod, you can actually play music right on the phone with those ugh, phone speakers. There's probably nothing more awful than playing a piece of music through an iPhone speaker, and yet I do it all the time. I watch YouTube videos, I watch movie trailers right on the phone with those speakers. I think there's a vast difference between critical listening and casual listening, and I want to say majority of the time we are casually listening to music, not critically listening. So while vinyl seems to exceed in this category of preferential soundstage, imaging, dynamic range. There are many things that the casual listening experience where something like an iPhone with those tiny, unfortunately awful speakers still excel in the way we consume music. You certainly can't have a playlist on vinyl. Uh, you would have to hire a DJ. And maintaining and calibrating your turntable, I mean, it's a big fuss. When was the last time you needed a leveler on your phone to make sure that your music is playing at optimal levels? The bottom line is, listening to music on vinyl, it's high maintenance and it's a chore. The point of all this, this turntable, these fancy speakers and amplifiers, is for you to listen to more music. But if technology itself, if it's got so much friction where it's kind of a chore to set it all up, you will probably be listening to less music, not more. And so, if a music system makes you listen to music less, isn't that the far inferior system than, say, something like your phone, where you can have it so be easily accessible and consume more music? Vinyl is expensive like straight up more expensive because it's a physical product. It's also quite fragile and you've got to take care of it. And don't get me started on the turntable and all the things that go with it, from the cost of the needle, the time it takes to calibrate, and cleaning the record itself. Now for some, including myself, at times this is a pure joy, like a nerdy collectible hobby. It is fun to fuss over the tone arm and get your turntable just so and cracking open your favorite album with a, a glass of scotch uh, and just enjoy. But sometimes you just want to blast through your workout playlist and do other things like host a party, work out, or cook. It's just not that convenient for you to critically listen to music all the time. In fact, I want to say uh, about 25% of my listening is done critically in fancy big systems, but majority of the time, 75% or more, uh, I'm listening for convenience. For vinyl lovers, uh, it's worth the extra cost and effort because it rewards the active and critical listener. For digital music streamers, uh, the convenience and the accessibility makes it really 
forever the new medium of now and the foreseeable future. So these are just my thoughts. Uh, what say you guys? Uh, I would love to know. You guys have a, a cool retro vintage setup at home or do you prefer iPhone, Spotify, Apple Music Stream? Do you guys hop the fence between the two? What are the pros and cons? Uh, I would love to know from you guys. Uh, let's discuss in the comments below and I'll see you guys next time.